Awesome. Well, look, I'm, I'm so excited for this conversation. So, and I usually approach this as a conversation. So feel free to drop it, drop in the questions. Um, so some context, as Stephanie mentioned, um, you know, I was born in Ghana. I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. Um, I went to school in Massachusetts area. That's where I found one of my uh, one of my co-founders. Um, he and I really began became friends and began working on several projects together. From that journey, I worked in finance for some years and was later recruited to a, a private equity firm. And for me, I began to really kind of think about you know, how do we lend, um, how do we leverage venture and entrepreneurship to support underrepresented founders? And that question really began to, I began to think about that as, you know, when you look across, um, you know, private equity, venture capital, growth equity, all, of, all that stages, um, significant pools of money are raised, but, you know, less than 10% goes to support women and underrepresented founders. So we built Visible Hands that we wanted it to be the first step in the entrepreneurial journey for overlooked founders. And I mentioned this a little bit here, you know, taking a look at, at, at some of these numbers and these numbers are pretty stark, right? If women and racial minorities make up about 70% of the US population, but yet less than 10% of VC funding is going to them, number one, that is a missed opportunity. And then number two is that this is something that we have to do something about. So, and in fact, when we look at it for black females and Latin X females is less than 1%. So my partners and I and the team, we said, look, we wanted to change this, that our mission and vision for Visible Hands is that as a venture capital firm with an accelerator, that we wanna highlight and invest in the limitless potential of overlooked founders. Because we really believe in a world where talent and execution should be the key predictors of success, right? Uh, and race and gender shouldn't be a factor in that. So, you know, when we, we, we think about that venture ecosystem, we began to see a pretty significant white space at that pre-seed, that pre-seed stages. And, you know, at that pre-seed is where founders need the meaningful financial capital. They need the company building support. They need the access to the social capital so that they can tap into different networks to get the business off the ground, to make it to seed or series A. And for us, we get excited right now. We get excited because we're seeing more support and more capital going into the um, to support diverse founders at the seed and series A, but we still need more. I mean, the number shows that we need more. So the white space that we're playing at at the pre-seed has been pretty critical. And we actually also leverage this as a collaborative process for the ecosystem because this increases the deal flow of diverse founders across the board. So this is something that we get excited about in working with other VCs and other um, ecosystem builders. Now, I wanted to share this number with you all uh, because you know, when we went out to market, we received over, this is the first, our first cohort, we received over 900 applicants. And you know, it showed us that there's a significant opportunity to build a, a really strong and a powerful pipeline. So we really see what we're doing as that we have one of the most robust platforms to source visionary founders. And on the right side, you see some of the breakdown of the, of the demographic. So about 60% uh, about of the applicant pool from our last cycle um, was Black and Latinx, and about 58% were women. And in fact, just this weekend, we closed the applications for our new, our, our new cohort, and it was a 50% bump from this 900, so about 1,400 people applied. And we're going to have an acceptance rate of around 2.5%. So you know, this gets us excited that you know, the, the, the work is meaningful, but then there's still, we need to ensure that we're expanding access and resources to support these incredible founders. And compared to other programs, we provide some of the most comprehensive support to our founders, and I'll share more about that shortly. So from last cycle, we selected 45 companies, which is composed of about 50 fellows. Um, and our, our model is that we have a two-step, a two-check process, right? An initial check of about 25K uh, structured as a safe, and then uh, an opportunity to invest an additional 150K. Compared to other programs, we provide some of the most comprehensive support to our founders. Um, you know, at last, last, our last cycle, we invested in about 45 companies. Our initial investment is about 25K on the upfront, um, structured as a safe, and then potential for an additional 150K. And you know, our model is that, you know, with the VC and an accelerator, 
we take this comprehensive approach of having this 14 week process. Now this 14 week process is virtual first uh, and we bring our cohort together in the beginning of it to really acknowledge the power of, of just of, of coming together, right? So if you look at this photo here, you see how diverse and how just how incredibly talented these folks are. And we take an agency model to the company building, to our accelerator. Next slide. And now to, to highlight what I mean by the agency model is that before we even begin the process of our accelerator, we spend time with our entrepreneurs to do something that we call a download and diagnostic. And that is the download is that we want to learn everything about your company, right? We really want to dive deep. And then the diagnostic piece is to identify what are the two to three things that you really care about to get you from either zero to 0.5 or 0.5 to one or one to 1.5, um, whatever that is. You know, we dive deep into that. So then it allows us to create a customized engagement plan. Now, this engagement plan is, gives us a tactical approach in which we can come in and, and really make sure that we're making progress. And then we have this one-on-one -on -one weekly check-ins. Now, this, that our check-in, we leverage it as an opportunity for you to keep us accountable, right? If we're coming in as a VC, not only giving capital, but also the, the company building support, keep us accountable. And then we also keep you accountable, right? To say, look, if you said you're going to do this, let's make sure that we're pushing things forward. So we really take this personalized, individualized approach to, to build the support for our entrepreneurs. Next slide. And the company building support here is another critical piece that from the personalized support, it allows us to highlight what the key things, as I mentioned. So this goes from, you know, this goes from design to branding, to market, to, 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 to marketing support, um, doing deep dive customer segment, re, customer segmentation research, to even recruiting, and to give you an example of what some of the one of the one of, a case study for one of our our portfolio companies. Next slide. Yeah, to give you an example for um, you know as a case study for one of our portfolio companies, I wanted to highlight Noelle Acosta. Noelle is the founder of Nula Health, and you know Noelle having gone through her own health journey, she wanted to build a femtech company to decode maternal health at home to close the, the health equity gap. And, you know, when I first met Noelle, I was just so impressed with her grit, her passion, but also her deep understanding about the space. You know, one of my favorite stories um, that, that I, I, share, I share about Noelle was that, you know, as I mentioned, when she was going through her health journey, um, the doctors told her that she couldn't drive for a, a period of time. And at the time she was doing customer research, right? She was actually going to meet with customers. So because she couldn't drive, she jumped on a bike to go knock on doors and give out flyers. And for me, this showed her ability, you know, and her grit to figure it out. So we, when we came in to support Noelle, Noelle already had the vision. She already had the strategy and the execution. And we wanted to bring in our resources to help her accelerate her process. So the design that you see here, we worked with Noelle to create a clickable prototype for her. Um, we did landing pages and also the design that you see on the right, we worked no with Noelle to create an, the, the, the packaging for the at-home test kits. And in addition to the, the, the branding, the design and the marketing support, we also supported her on the capital raising. And Noelle just recently closed a $1.4 million pre-seed round uh, with Precursor as one of the lead investors. So, you know, we so to highlight that we bring the financial capital, we bring the company building support. And I think something that is an absolute game changer about what we do is our community. And our founders, you know, if you if you were to ask them, they will tell you that that there's a massive amount of support and knowledge coming from the different expertise within people in the, within in the community. So that is something that I'm incredibly proud of that it goes beyond cap, financial capital. It goes beyond um, social capital is also saying that we are building in community together. Next slide. And we have also built a pretty strong ecosystem of advisors uh, who are coming from many, many you know, tech companies, really, really incredibly talented and also corporate sponsors ranging from Bank of America, JP Morgan, um, Goldman Sachs, Liberty Mutual, and in fact, just yesterday, yesterday we launched 
our partnership with um, Google to launch our uh, VHLX, which is our, our accelerator to support Latinx founders. So please check it out, uh, make sure that you apply. We're really excited about that and it shows the collaborations that we're establishing within the ecosystem. And to highlight, you know, here that in addition to all the support here that, you know, that I emphasize to our founders is, you know, we really take this approach of that we can't do this alone in silos, right? That we do this in collaborative with other investors. So we've had some of our, some of the co-investments from other VCs to, um, to in our portfolio companies include Upfront, Pillar, Precursor, Serena Ventures. Um, we've received an MPS score of 86, uh, which we're excited about. We've done over 120 projects that for us, that allows us to be very tactical in supporting our founders and held over 104 events. And this is just for our previous cohort. So our upcoming cohort, we have even bigger plans for it. And, you know, lastly is our incredible team. You know, that all this work can't be possible without the team that we've composed. And they all bring really unique skill sets and, and, and expertise this allows us to ensure that we're providing meaningful value and really meaningful su to support to ensure the success, success and growth of our entrepreneurs and our portfolio companies. And open for questions. Awesome. Thank you so much, Daniel. Yes, I want to ask the audience to now bring us any questions you have about visible hands, about their inner workings, about what kind of uh, companies they're wanting to fund. Um, I want to start with a little bit of background, Daniel. Um, I'm curious about how your experience as an entrepreneur in residence at MIT Design X made you uniquely suited to be the capital allocator that you are today. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think for me, it goes beyond just MIT. Um, you know, before, before that, um, I, was, I was at a venture capital firm. I worked at a growth equity firm and just seeing the entrepreneurs we were working with, the capital amounts that we were raising, um, it got me excited, right? That, you know, in, when you're investing, it's not just about money. There's also really tactical things that you have to do to help grow these companies. Um, so that got me excited. And the other point, um, Stephanie, is that there was also a problem that needs to be, that needed to be solved. Um, you know, when I saw the, the, the amount of capital that was being raised generally in private equity or in growth equity and venture capital fund, and the, the, the amount that wasn't going to, to support women and underrepresented founders, for me, that was an important problem to do something about. Um, so we took my partners and I took an entrepreneurial approach uh, to go out and figure it out, come up with a solution and, and, and do it. So it's been exciting to be on this journey to be backing these incredible founders. Absolutely. Um, another part of your background is public administration. How does that inform your work today? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I, I did a joint degree. I uh, went to Wharton for my MBA and Harvard for policy. And that was a really good learning. I normally take a multidisciplinary approach to learning. Um, and, you know, the, the, the policy side was just understanding that, you know, business and policy are so interconnected. Yeah. Um, you know, even when we think about, about venture, right, they're, they're, the government is one of the largest allocators of capital. So understanding mm -hmm. how that could be used to support just the venture ecosystem um, is really, really critical. In fact, what we're going through right now, right, what's happening in the market, the connection of interest rates and inflation, you know, is connected to the decisions that the Federal Reserve has to make. They're all so interconnected. So that's why mm -hmm. I take a multidisciplinary approach to, um, to my thinking and learning. Yeah. Speaking of what's going on economically, do you have any um, companies in your portfolio that are coming up with interesting fintech solutions to problems like that? Yeah. Yeah. So we have a company in our portfolio called Let's Get Set um, and it's founded by Claire. So Claire Hersig, um, she, her platform is to, is to really support families that are making less than $30,000, um, you know, uh, in the median income. And it, this is a really important problem in the U.S. because about a quarter of the U.S. population don't even have access to um, banking, right? So then how do you support them in ensuring that they're getting their, tax, their taxes done and um, meaningful financial solutions to help them save? So Claire is doing really impressive work there. And Claire is also an MIT grad. 
Oh, cool. Yeah. I think that, you know, your thesis of investing in underrepresented founders comes back to this issue of like hugely important problems, like you just described that a lot of people in that really top tier of VC, I mean, let's be honest, a lot of like VC people are so successful. They're driven, they're powerful. They've accomplished a lot in life. They're financially stable. Um, and maybe they're blind to a lot of these problems. Can you say more about that thesis of um, the invisible problems that funds like yours can, you know, invest in solving? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I think that there are some, you know, founders who are really close to um, certain ideas that they can provide meaningful solutions to, 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 to address. For example, yesterday I was at a dinner with a couple of our entrepreneurs a company called Parfait. Uh, and Parfait is founded by four Black women, two MIT PhD students, two Wharton MBAs. And they're building a computer vision technology that allows women to buy customized wigs, right? You know, when I first met them and we were learning about the solution, you know, I learning that a lot of VCs were passing on because they just didn't understand the problem, the, 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 the you know, the, the, the problem in the market. I mean, I have three sisters, right? And I see the cash flow. I see the amount that they spend on wigs. <laughs> um, so it just made sense to me that if you're leveraging deep technology to expedite, expedite that process, um, it was just a really impressive solution. We were one of the first institutional investors in that company. They just closed um, their round at $5 million with Serena Ventures and Upfront as the lead invest in investors. Wow. So, mm -hmm. you know, for us, this is this is really exciting work because we're seeing, we understand these markets, we understand these solutions, um, and you know we're working with phenomenal founders who are providing meaningful ideas to actually get it done. Do you have any other great stories like that that are solving problems that maybe the traditional like white male VC subset is not seeing? Yeah, I mean, I could I could go on, Stephanie. Um, you know, in fact, it's <laughs> like the same, top three. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in fact, at that same dinner, one of our other founders who was there, um, you know, Maylin, Maylin, uh, her company is called Hearth Display, and she is a digital display board that is software driven um, and allows mothers to manage their you know busy lives. And you know, when Maylin, um, you know, went to market. Melan, you know, talked about some how she 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 struggled a little bit in a fundraising journey, not because of any not not because she's not a great founder. In fact, she had half a million dollars in pre-sale revenue, and still, you know, people were a little bit reluctant to write the check. So we were the first institutional investor in Melan mm. and supported her in um, in the fundraising and other parts of the business. And she also just closed her pre-seed round earlier this year. Nice. Um, I, I do want to hear all of these stories, but I'm noticing a few questions in the YouTube chat that I hadn't seen yet. So let's go through some of these. Where is Visible Hands located? Yeah, so we're, we're, we're virtual. Um, you know, we have our team spread out all around. I spent a lot of my time in Boston. We have one of my co-founders in New York. Another one is moving to Charlotte. Um, but we're virtual and we resource talent all around the country. Uh, but we also like to give a shout out to Boston because Boston is the, the birthplace of Visible Hand. So we're headquartered in Boston. Okay, great. And someone is asking, uh, Kenneth says, with your sign up for your accelerator being closed, does that mean you're not looking for any more startups this year? Well, say, uh, Kenneth, like we're always talking to entrepreneurs. Um, you know, we, we even though the, the application is closed, for me, I think part of my job is that I want to support and support great founders. Um, and if, you know, if I can be a support, feel free to reach out. We have also um, established our, our partnership that I mentioned. We announced yesterday with Google uh, to run our Latinx, our Latinx accelerator. So, you know, if you are Latinx, do check it out. It's, it's, we're really excited about that. Yeah. What's your hope for that? I mean, any specific goals that you have in mind? How many startups are you hoping to fund through that accelerator? Yes, probably it's going to be around 20, um, 20 startups that we're going to be working with. Uh, but the goal is with all of this, Stephanie, is that is, is to grow and allow the capacity to support more um, startups. Definitely like that's just not that's not enough. Right. So we want to continue mm -hmm. to grow and have more capacity to support. OK, great. Um, this is a good question from Francis. Do you only invest in firms that go through your accelerators? Right now, yes, that's right now we only invest in firms that that goes through our platform. 
Um, later, we're thinking about um, creating opportunities in which um, that they don't necessarily have to go through visible hands. However, we want to ensure that there are the, the resources that we're providing are still there to support those founders. Okay. Um, Deborah has a question that's a bit general. Uh, Deborah Smith, I wonder if you could give a little more specificity, but she's asking like, um, would a company with an MVP, free customers, freemium business model, and early signs of product market fit be a good fit for your accelerator? Can you tell us more about those specific things you're looking for in your startups? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we funded companies who were, um, you know, who were pre-product or just at the ideation phase to people who mm -hmm. actually had the product and they were, they were raising their round. So, so that, but to your question, yes. Um, for me at the core of what we're looking for is in, in one of our, one of our early, uh, investors and advisors, he's like, look, the job of any VC is that you're a glorified, you're a glorified recruiter, right? You're trying to find, you know, the LeBron James out there and supporting, helping the LeBron James get to the right court or the right team, but you're a glorified recruiter. So Deborah, for us within that context and being a glorified recruiter is we're looking for founders who have a deep, deep understanding about the problem. And in fact, for me, mm -hmm. that is more important than the solution, um, yeah. because when folks have a deep understanding about the problem, it allows the flexibility to, to iterate on the solution. But I see red flags when people are so honing in on that solution and they think that solution is the, the only right thing. That's something mm -hmm. I get concerned about. And then the other thing that I, I really um, appreciate is execution. I talked about Noel, right, that she couldn't drive, so she jumped on a bike to go give out flyers. Um, just this past weekend, I was with her giving out flyers at the Doula Expo. Like that level of hustle and execution is something that um, is really important to me. And then lastly is community uh, that you can't build in silos. You have to tap into people, leverage resources, and really build a support around you. Great. Yeah. All great advice for startup founders. Um, I'll end with Daryl's question. I'm, I don't think you touched on this uh, in your presentation, but how'd you come up with the name Visible Hands? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it was it was um, several things. My partners and I think we were just kind of uh, trying different names because we were working on different companies before that. Uh, but we really the, the name Visible, Visible Hands stuck out out of the mix of everything because we wanted to challenge the idea of the invisible hands, right? That the, markets, the market forces self-correct for everyone, but that's not really the case. That so many people are, are just left out, of the, uh, left out of the equation. So we actually have to provide opportunities in which they become visible. And then the other thing is that the vi visible is that having a vision um, and going after that vision and then the hands is put it to work. Um, let's go and execute. It's a great name. Okay. I do have time for another and live on YouTube asks a great one. You are so familiar with this space of underrepresented founders. Can you recommend other funds and programs um, that invest in them? Yeah, absolutely. I know Techstars, um, we're big fans of, they just um, started a, a platform for that. Um, you know, we have several early, early, I know Zane Ventures is also a really good platform. Founders Gym, um, you know, and we have day one, there's so many really cool platforms that are that we're collaborating with to ensure that even if people can, um, you know, we can't accept everyone. We want to ensure that we're collaborating with other folks as well. Yeah, I've um, even noticed a few uh, funds on this event yesterday that were specific, like Lolita Tab at Ghana's is yeah. focusing on LATAM. Um, who else? We had Mac earlier that yeah, Mac, is Lolita. That's yep. right. We have um, Concrete Rose, so a little bit around the, the seed. Oh. I mean, Harlem um, is also, you know. Well, a, a, Tupac a reference. <laughs> yeah, Tupac <laughs> reference. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, I feel like we had one other that was like underrepresented founder specific. Might have been someone with a um, number, maybe 11 tribes. Um, but yeah, Techstars was a good uh, recommendation too. It's so encouraging to see so many of these um, funds that, with this focus. And I'm just so grateful for your work and uh, for your time today, Daniel. Awesome. Appreciate you all. Thank you so much. Yeah. Where can we du direct everyone that um, wants to get in touch with you? Absolutely. So check out visiblehands.vc um, and check out all of our, our, our social media pages, or you can email me at daniel at visiblehands.vc. Easy enough. Okay. Thanks again, Daniel. Take care, everybody.
Um, we're going to be hearing from Jimmy Lee with Seed Invest, who is one of our sponsors for this Meet Our Fund event. Seed Invest is an online fundraising platform. They are designed for growth obsessed startups. You can raise your seed or Series A from their network of over 600,000 investors. Um, lots of successfully funded companies have raised subsequent rounds with the VCs that you're hearing from in this event after raising um, through crowdfunding with Seed Invest. So I'd like to um, go ahead and welcome Jing Li on and thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Stephanie. Good to see everybody. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jing. I'm here from Seed Invest. Um, Stephanie gave us a great precursor on you know, what Seed Invest is, um, but we're essentially a leading crowdfunding platform that helps companies raise capital online. Um, so if anyone has raised capital in the past, I think it's you know, a really clear you know, problem, a little bit of a headache to you know, go out and raise capital. Um, that's exactly you know, what my co-founders Ryan and James realized back in 2012, um, looking around at their friends, family, other companies, people were spending you know, more time raising capital than actually building their company. So um, with that, you know, with the founding of Seed Invest, as well as you know, changes to the regulations, um, we were essentially able to build this two-sided marketplace to, uh, to help companies raise capital um, on the internet. So we're here to be, you know, your full service um, quality focused investment platform to help you guys raise capital, you know, from the crowd in the most seamless, compliant and efficient way. Um, so a little bit about me on the next slide here. Um, I've been with Seed Invest for um, about three and a half years now. Um, I've had, you know, a super interesting experience in those three and a half years. You know, when I started, we were a 20 person, you know, essentially a startup in a walk up in, you know, Soho in New York City. Um, and have since grown to, you know, a 70 person, you know, company arm, so to speak, um, at a larger 700 person org. Um, so during my tenure at Seed Invest, you know, I've worn a lot of hats by nature of being in that startup environment. So totally know what you guys are going through in, in a sense. Um, so everything from operations, onboarding, customer service to venture. Um, venture has luckily, you know, been my focus in the past two years. Years, um, is something that, you know, I've been able to have a hand in. Um, in my time on the venture team, I've worked with over 30 companies to raise capital on the platform. Um, a little tidbit fun fact, if you will. Um, I, my focus on, is mostly on seeds and Series A, not necessarily married to it, more of a preference. Um, and I have a penchant for, you know, consumer-driven, um, fintech, and Web3 companies. So I, I alluded to this um, on the next slide, you'll see um, the backstory between, you know, Circle and Seed Invest. So Seed Invest founded in 2012. Um, we were essentially acquired by a global blockchain company called Circle back in 2019. Um, and we've essentially, you know, we've been um, their startup investing arm um, in, in the past, you know, couple of years. So for those of you who are not familiar with Circle, um, Circle is um, a leading blockchain company and the creator of USDC, um, which is the dollar backed digital currency. And what we're looking to do is essentially create um, internet infrastructure um, for this digital currency and for companies to be able to operate um, on this blockchain and essentially move capital um, quicker than you know traditional um, traditional finance. So a number of you know different product offerings you can take a look at here. Um, obviously, you know. There's Circle, Circle Accounts, um, our APIs that essentially helps um, companies, you know, um, with traditional, you know, finance items, but powered by our dollar back digital currency. Um, so quicker payments, settlements, transactions, um, the works um, that is, you know, Circle Accounts. Um, we also have a yield product um, to help companies grow their capital um, in a little bit, um, a, a little bit more growth driven kind of way. Um, it's a yield generating product that leverages crypto capital markets um, to gain, you know, higher um, yield interest rates. So anywhere three to six percent, I think it really depends on um, what the market is these days. Um, but from the funding side, which is, you know, what we're really here um, today, there's essentially two venture arms at Seed Invest. Um, one is Circle Ventures, which is our strategic corporate venture arm. Um, this is, you know, 
um, our venture arm that makes direct investments into companies that um, have a lot of synergies with, you know, the Circle mission um, and will, you know, has, you know, a product, a company that is really helping to accelerate um, global crypto innovation, USDC adoption, the works. Um, and then there's Seed Invest, which is, you know, our main focus today, um, which is, you know, our online infrastructure to help companies raise capital. So your startup investment bank, if you will. Next slide. So since 2012, um, we've been, you know, pretty busy. Um, we've raised over $450 million um, for over 250 portfolio companies um, across, you know, a very wide range of different sectors, um, di like from companies all across the world, um, from all different stages. I think a common question I get is, you know, what are the actual sizes of these rounds? Um, I think historically, you know, holistically, we're seeing an average raise size of, of about $3 million. Million. Um, I will caveat that by saying, you know, we've had a number of very large growth stage rounds that might skew that a little bit. So if we cut out these like growth stage 10 million plus rounds, um, we're looking at an average raise of, of about a million. Um, and I, you know, I talked about this, we're building a two sided marketplace. So outside of, you know, me and my team on the venture going after um, companies and helping them raise capital. Um, we've also, you know, spent a lot of time growing our investor community. Um, so part of our mission is to, you know, democratize access um, to capital, um, uh, democratize access to the private markets. Um, so allowing investors, even everyday investors to invest in, you know, top notch opportunities that they normally would not be able to. Um, so we have about 600,000 investors within our network, about 15% of those are um, accredited investors managed by our capital markets team. Um, so when you come to work with us, you know, we're looking to leverage, you know, some parts, all um, of this, you know, seed invest network um, of investors. Next slide. Um, so like I mentioned, um, we've worked with, you know, high quality companies from all different stages. Um, this is just a select um, few. Um, so like now our X is standing out to me because we just closed on their um, 35 million and counting um, series C round last year. Um, this is a company that, you know, we were able to support back in 2017 um, with their seed round. Um, I think we raised about, you know, 750K for them. They only had about a thousand customers back then, um, but have since, you know, grown dramatically. Um, and we've essentially been able to help now Rx um, cap um, raise you know the entirety of the capital that's um, built to grow um, their business so they're you know a retail tech driven you know pharmacy company um, that is you know once one kind of company um, but as you can see you know this is a big cross section of other companies heliogen um, is in the clean tech space it's a solar company um, we helped them raise you know a two million bridge round back in i don't even know like a couple of years ago um, and then they're actually one of the I would want to say like probably the biggest exits um, in crowdfunding history. They recently went public um, and our investors who were able to invest in the bridge round a couple of years ago um, saw a pretty meaningful exit. I want to say it was like 44x. Um, so that was obviously really exciting for, for our investors and really exciting um, for Heliogen and for, for us as well. Um, but a clear, you know, cross section here in terms of, you know, different um, kinds of industries. Um, we're seed invest, um, but we're not limited to just seed. Um, we're looking to work with companies um, from their seed to series A to series B um, and be your, you know, your life cycle fundraising partner. Next slide, please. Um, so a few different ways that, you know, we commonly work with companies. Um, definitely not, you know, limited to just this, but there, you know, are three most common use cases, if you will. Um, so the first one is, you know, in topping off VC and institutional lead rounds. So what does that mean? Um, so let's say, you know, you already, you know, hit the pavement running and you have a few checks in, um, but you're, you, you essentially, you know, want to hire someone else to help fill out the rest of your round, um, that's where we could potentially come in. Um, so we're looking at anywhere from, you know, 500K to 1.5 million, maybe even 2 million in top off capital um, in this route. Um, so you're coming to us with the lead and we're essentially helping you fill out the rest. 
Um, and that's, you know, probably our quickest um, route because we usually do this um, with our credit investor network only, um, which makes it a little bit easier from the regulatory perspective. Um, but, you know, our bread and butter and where we're raising the most capital um, is with these crowd driven rounds. Um, so we have, you know, your community and crowd driven capital um, for these, you know, earlier stage companies, you can raise upwards of five. 500 million through this um, route. And this is your, you know, traditional, you know, equity crowdfunding, if you will. So we're going out to the full seed invest network, we're going out to your community, if that's something that you want to do. Um, and we're going out to, you know, the general public. Um, and this is a great way for companies who, you know, are, you know, marketing are into you know brand building, and really bringing on commu your community to become, you know, evangelists um, in your raise. Same similar concept with the crowd uh, crowd powered growth capital. This is just um, you know this community driven thing, but in a much larger scale. You can see you can raise up to seventy five million through this route. Um, as you can imagine, you know it takes a little bit longer to do so, um, but it's essentially you know we help you set up um, the campaign. Um, there's an investment profile, and this is where investors all come um, online um, to learn about the opportunity and ultimately to invest. So we're here to be, you know, your marketing partners, um, your compliance partners, your legal partners, um, and essentially helping you like PM and manage the entire process um, to raise, you know, different levels of, you know, capital. So next slide. Um, another common question I get is, you know, um, I'm, you know, talking to VCs right now, like traditional VCs. Um, can I still, you know, work with Seed Invest? Um, we are absolutely, we are complementary. So a number of our companies um, have, you know, either raised from traditional VC in the past, um, are currently raising from, you know, VCs in the current round that you're looking to raise in, um, or, you know, go on to raise um, traditional venture capital or go on to raise from private equity or go public, get acquired, merge. So um, it's very much complementary to the rest of the ecosystem. Um, again, we're really here to be your fundraising partners. Um, so to bring to make the fundraising process a little bit easier um, and also, you know, utilize, you know, different marketing tools um, to, you know, kill two birds with one stone, so to speak. So you're marketing, you're raising capital and you're doing both. Next slide. Um, so just a selection of different funds that, you know, we've co-invested with. Um, not much to speak to here, um, but you can see definitely not, um, you know, at odds, um, definitely complimentary. And we work with a lot of uh, funds to, you know, help them with top off capital if they have, you know, a company that they're writing a check with, but they need some excess capital. Um, we're here to, you know, fill out the rest of that without, you know, necessarily taking a board seat. So that's always a benefit to them. Um, we're passive capital um, and really here to just, you know, help companies get funded. Next slide. Um, another iteration of, you know, um, I think a common misconception is, you know, we are seed invest, so we must only work with seed stage companies. Um, definitely, you know, we definitely work with seed stage companies. I want to say at over half of our companies are, you know, seed stage, um, but we really are here to be your, you know, fundraising partner. Um, seed is an, a really exciting place to be um, from a company perspective as well as an investor perspective. Um, so we do see a lot of activity in that space, um, and which is reflected here as well. Um, but companies who are doing well um, and, you know, are continuing to do well, um, we're really here to help, you know, continuously fund um, and, you know, leverage our network um, and, you know, different regulatory exemptions um, to help you do that. Um, and so one thing that we do a little bit differently than, you know, other people or other platforms or other services out there is, again, we are really here to be your fundraising partner. Um, and part of our diligence is to, you know, figure out just that is, you know, are we going to be the right partner for you? Um, do we believe based off of what we're seeing from the company um, and but based off what we've seen in our ability and our network, et cetera, um, do we think we can deliver on the 
capital you're looking for. So that's number one. I mean, as a result, you know, we are looking to partner with a select group of companies um, so that, you know, we are able to, you know, devote our resources, our time, our teams um, to, you know, every company that is raising with us. So we're not like, you know, a platform for anyone to come. Um, we're here, we're going to fully staff your, your deal. You'll have a full team to help you, you know, raise the capital. Um, and we're, you know, fully here, our 70 person team um, is here to help you um, get to that next step. So again, we're a bespoke partner from the regulatory side. Um, we operate our own broker dealer, um, which essentially means, you know, we have a lot of flexibility um, in, you know, how we can help companies fundraise. Um, and we're also very experienced in, you know, that legal compliance regulatory space. So we can help you do um, do this kind of raise um, in a compliant way to best protect you guys going forward. Um, we can serve as both, you know, your lead um, or your follow on. So we can help you, you, you know, essentially we can help fund a company um, raise from zero to, you know, a million, two million, um, whatever you're looking to do. We're here to help structure it and see, you know, is this something that um, we can essentially deliver on um, and we can do it all through either, you know, completely publicly. So like we're doing the whole marketing thing, we're doing digital ads, or we're, do, we're like sending a lot of emails, or we can do it, you know, completely privately. Um, and we're really just using, you know, a select market, or we're really just using, you know, the seed invest um, platform as, you know, a transactions means. So we're pretty flexible in that way. Um, a common question I also get is, you know, what does it mean to like take on thousands, if not tens of thousands of new investors? Um, we're here to essentially make that, you know, plausible, feasible. Um, so obviously you're not gonna end up with thousands or tens of thousands of new investors on your cap table. Um, we help with that, you know, cap table management with a one line item on the cap table solution. So what you see is um, essentially, you know, a trust account. I think that's, you know, the, the most popular, um, you know, means that we've been using these days um, where all the investors essentially become beneficia uh, beneficiaries of the trust. And that's what it's, Seen on your cap table. And that's what we help you guys manage going forward. So again, long-term partner, we're going to be here to help you manage these investors going forward. Um, and during the raise, um, you have a full team to help you guys, you know, fundraise um, throughout. So you outsource, you know, some of your, you know, CPA work um, to an accountant. In some ways, you're, you know, outsourcing part of the fundraising um, to another team. So you have a little bit more time back um, to actually run your business. And one little carrot that we've been, you know, running in the past couple of months um, is for companies who are interested in the marketing side. Um, we've, uh, you know, committed to really dedicate our own resources to helping, you know, companies raise their round and build that brand and marketing um, power. Um, so we'll actually contribute, you know, some of our own capital to, you know, raising these marketing driven rounds. Um, so anywhere from, you know, at least $15,000 upwards of a million in digital advertising dollars. It's something that, you know, we've honed over the past couple of years for companies um, who are raising through this route. Um, and we have seen it, it work. So we're, we're really looking to put, you know, our money where our mouth is um, and help companies, you know, test this and do this. Um, so that's just a little perk that we have running for um, hopefully the rest of the year, because I love this promotion. Next one. So yeah, so that is, you know, equity crowdfunding and seed invest in a nutshell. Um, if you have any questions or if you're interested in learning more, feel free to reach out to me at jing at seedinvest.com. Um, if you have any, you know, interest in the circle side, obviously we're all one team. So feel free to reach out to me as well. Um, I'm happy to put you in touch with the right person. Um, but I look forward to, you know, chatting with some of you later. Great. Jing, thank you for that. It seems like yeah. Seed Invest is a wonderful partner to have in fundraising. And in case anyone in our audience is like, is this right for me? I want to maybe do a little case study. Um, you mentioned Heliogen, 40% yeah. return. Oh my goodness. 44X. No. So companies who you invested, well, I think 
like a thousand dollars and you saw forty forty thousand dollars back in your bank account. Like we've had some investors, you know, come back and, and write to us, like our customer service team, like, hey, like, is this a mistake or what happened? Like you haven't been checking your emails. So um, that was really exciting for us. So we think that was, you know, one of the largest returns um, in, you know, equity crowdfunding and it really, you know, galvanized um, the need to like allow people to have access um, to this opportunity. And I know Heliogen itself founded by Bill Gross. He was, you know, a, he is an amazing founder. Um, I, I think it's a funny story. And like in that round itself, they raised a small like retail focused um, plus accredited um, investor round. Um, so he had everything from, you know, the cab driver that took him to like our pitch event invest um, to, you know, someone from like USC invested, you know, a thousand dollars, but just happened to be like the right person to broker, you know, a multi-million dollar deal with them. Um, so it really just shows the power of, you know, exposure um, and just being able to, you know, run a raise online. So Heliogen is a clean energy company, solar, hydrogen. Why was Seed Invest the right fit for them to raise on? Yeah. So back in the day, you know, Bill Gross himself is very much a believer in democratizing access. So that was, you know, number one key. Um, and they were also, okay. you know, in a place where they're looking to raise, you know, a bridge round. Um, and so we were like well positioned to help them just like fill that out quickly. So it was a mixture of one one, let's bring in, you know, the crowd. This is, you know, a space that, you know, impacts everybody. Um, mm -hmm. Let's, you know, get people bought into this. Um, and two, you know, it's also a company where he had a vision where this would be, you know, a public company one day. Um, and we've seen a lot of companies, you know, kind of utilize this as, you know, a dress rehearsal in some ways of like, at some point you get to a point where, you know, the, the size of your company or like the exit of your company is related to like the public markets and the public sentiment. Um, so this is a great, you know, dress rehearsal to start bringing in people early um, to get to know your company, to literally back your company. Um, so so, you know, you you have that from the get go. Great things to consider for everyone out there who might still be on the fence about if Seed Invest is right for them. Jing, thank you so much for this information. Um, really grateful that you guys are here and sponsoring today. Awesome. Good to see you all. Bye.